All right. Welcome to the warm up. Want to thank you, Shannon Shorter. Uh, a very, very, very special guest for joining us. We had to go to uh, to the drawing board to prepare for this man. Um, just happy to feel blessed to be able to really, man, have you get with us and and you know and just take time out. I know it's particularly with the time difference. We most appreciative believers, you know. Um, first of all, how you doing? Man, I'm good. I actually had a game today. So you called me on like some perfect timing because usually after a game, I'm up all night just in my thoughts and uh, just trying to relax. Um, so it was perfect timing for sure. Well, take us through that right there because, you know, sometimes, you know, we'll chat up whatever and then I get a chance to even check you out. But today, obviously, I didn't. So take us through that if you don't mind. I mean, it was a, it was a slow start to the game. I feel like if we would have came out with the energy and the effort that we needed from the jump, it wouldn't have been as close of a game. But, um, I mean, you learn from it. But I'm more so big on, like, building habits as we get closer to the playoffs. We got four more games into the playoffs. So the habits you build going into the playoffs, they can translate and carry over. I'm glad we won the game, but it's not always about just winning the game. It's how you won the game and how you win the game and how you compete and how you execute the game plan and et cetera to – you know, separate yourself. And um, obviously, we still pulled it out. We still had some guys that had some grit and some effort. So just to get the win was good, but I'm still a little irritated with how we came out. Okay. Okay. What time so, is it there? 2. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Okay. I yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why I said we, we again, <laughs> we grateful, man. Seven really. Here. We really appreciate He know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, I think you know it definitely what time it is here, right? But you, you did touched on something, Shannon, man. Um, your, what's your approach to the game today? And contrast it to how your approach was, say, 10 years ago, starting out. Because your journey, if I kind of wanted to open up with that, man. Your journey, you have played for what, 12 teams? Man, I, I can't even keep counting. I've been in about 14 countries, though. Thank yeah. God. But just, that's a great question. I ain't never been asked that question. But the journey for me when I started out was just to make sure um, I leave my mark. And when I say that, it's like a lot of people don't understand. Like, when you first starting out, you know, you think – uh, these opportunities are going to continuously come. But they won't come unless you um, take care of the business you got to take care of at hand. So when I was in Mexico, that was my first opportunity I ever got in Mexico, right? And with that opportunity, my whole mindset was just to make sure I dominate this opportunity so I won't go back home. Yeah. That was my whole mindset. And thank God, you know, I had a good season. I led the league in scoring, and my name started carrying weight. And it just started flowing, uh, you know, at that time, I didn't have an agent, an agent, but I had people reach out to me, trying to get me jobs and et cetera. So just because of the opportunity I stepped into. And again, the opportunity ain't always going to look like the rainbow. And it's going to be gold at the end of, you know what I mean? When I was in Mexico, I made $500 a month. I was sleeping in a twin bed. And it was some situ some circumstances that, you know, you got to really be built for if you talk about, having a um, long lasting career in this overseas ball because overseas ball is totally different from like the NBA and et cetera. Like you got to deal with so much off the court sometimes that it can really take your mental focus off what you love to do. And so like 10 years later though, my mindset going in is just to uh, impact a team and winning and just winning championships. Like this year, this we hopefully we get to the finals. We win it. That'll be my third straight championship. But that'll be my fifth time in the finals in a row. So that's my whole mindset is just uh, leaving a mark and just letting guys know that I was a winner before anything. Mm-hmm. You touched on something. Um, you and I want to kind of go back to it because you didn't elaborate. If you if you would please, if you comfortable. Some of the things you say you have to be ready for, and like, what would you say some of those things were that you had to deal with? Some of the most extenuating circumstances you had to deal with 
throughout you know throughout your journey uh just riding 22 hour bus rides and making sure you taking care of your body because that's not healthy for a body when you have a game the next day all of this with late payments you know what i mean obviously you got um situations back home that need tending to and you know you're depending on this payment to be on time and etc and it's two months later month late thank god he got me in a position where you know i got money saved i got stuff working for me and etc outside of basketball so i can you know reach and pull from other um avenues that i have going but at the same time it's about the principle for me you know what i mean you expect me to show up every day Get no doubt. Practice, compete at a high level, and etc. But mm-hmm. you can't even stand on your word and just make sure my payment there on the fifteenth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then just being in situations where you don't have the necessary recovery equipment. You know, when you have like three to four games in one week, but you don't have ice, or you don't have um, um, a masseuse, or you don't have like a Normatec or a game ready, or just um, uh, ultrasound, stem machine, anything that can help your body recover quickly and just make you feel not as sore the next day after a game and you got a game in, in another day, um, that can really like be detrimental to you because it's like you get out the bed feeling like you just ran into a brick wall. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. Um, just those things I done been through. You know what I mean? I'm not the only overseas player that's been through that. So yeah, I don't got no reason to complain about it. My whole thing was just I wanted the opportunity. Once I got the opportunity, I knew what I was going to do with the opportunity. And, um, you know, we embarking on 10 years. And I'm grateful for that because you got to be a good steward of what God put in your life. And, and even when it's uncomfortable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't really realize that because I got you in that situation for a reason. It's either gonna shape you or it's gonna. It's gonna well, well, that's where the growth. I always say that's where the growth happens. And it, it, absolutely. And I heard some in the podcast today where he said, "What separates the elite is their response." And that was powerful to me because it's it's very true. Like your response to when you get praised, your response to when you in a, in, in adverse situations, your response is either gonna sustain you or it's gonna it's gonna make you fold and put you 10 steps back. So that was very powerful and, and just uh, very in a, had a lot of intellect to it that I really took heed to. So. Yeah. No, we got a lot of respect for you, man. Um, no doubt, on and off the court. And you mentioned some of the things you got going on. And I know for those who looking and we, we going to talk basketball for sure. We get into that. But – it's a lot that goes into, and it's a lot more to, to Shannon than just basketball. And you, you touched on already in the first five minutes things you have going on, you know, that's make it get, you know, for, to, to put yourself in a position to make money off the court. Um, give us some insight to your thought process in terms of, you know, when did you kind of get that? Was it, a, you, did you start off with that mindset from day one? Or was it you're you, you three years in, or was settled? With, with what kind of led you to where you are now? And, you, and then just elaborate, take us on into let, talking about your uh, it's only right foundation and so on. Mm-hmm. No disrespect, but I feel like the black community don't have um, the insight into financial literacy, right? Because I'm a prime example. So I met my teammate uh, my second year out. And he had a financial advisor, right? And he introduced me to as a financial advisor. And we built a relationship. We've been together ever since. And um, he just put me on game with stocks, with investments, with, with mutual funds, and just ways you can make money while, you know, it's really just sick. And um, I put my mama in position. Like, I think one of the main things you can do as far as, like, when you making quote-unquote money or whatever the case may be is, uh, empower the people around you. Right. Yeah. So I got my mama uh, a food truck, a food truck and business that she had a vision about for some years. And I told her, you know, prepare a business plan for me and I'll look over it and, you know, I'll go from there. And so we got her a food truck and obviously the pandemic slowed a lot of stuff down. No doubt. So we about to be picking right back up in the next month. So I'm excited for that and excited for her because I know the joy it brings to her. 
You know? Yeah. And then my foundation is on the right foundation. I'm I'm big on um being of service to my people, right? So through my scholarship giveaway, through free basketball camps, through my turkey giveaway, through my back to school drive. I just want to be a light for the youth. I feel like, especially with the scholarships, I feel like when you invest in somebody, when you, um, not even with just your words, like words are powerful too, but when you put action behind your words, when they hear some adverse situations in, in school and, and running through some, running through some times where like, I don't want to go to class or I don't want to go to study or I don't want to study. I don't want to do this. I don't want to, you know, wait until the last minute to take a test. I feel like they going to remember that somebody believed in you to uh, accomplish the dream you set forth for yourself. I tell a lot of people all the time that it's more, it's, this is a very like pointed statement, but it's easier said than done. And what I mean by that is just do what you say you're going to do. <laughs> right? I mean, like that, that's a very pointed, direct statement. <laughs> but a lot of people don't embrace that statement. I would say most people don't. <laughs> Most people, we joke, we laughing because we joke it's, it because every day, every day we like people just simply don't do what they say they're going to do. Not what I say I'm asking you to do. Do what you say you're going to do. That's difficult for people nowadays. And I heard another statement where it said character shows up when um, um, adversity you don't hits. feel like doing what you said you was going to do. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a powerful statement you know what i mean because now it's all the honus is on you yeah and and you you basically letting yourself now yeah and it's, it's basically like for the analogy i give is like at the beginning of a basketball season right everybody energetic live turned up we gonna do this we gonna win we gonna do this <laughs> you know, one, two three games in a row that whole mental space shift to woe is me uh, 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 why coach doing me like this? What happened to the energy that you had at the beginning of the season? I want to be this. I want to be the MVP. I'm going to get up shots. Dude. I'm going to do the controlling what's in your control. So I feel like when, when people run into some tough situations or some adverse situations, everything they said prior to those situations kind of just, just disappear because it's like they uncomfortable. But like you said earlier, uncomfortableness brings growth. So um, it's a very pointed statement, very simple statement, but it's, like I said, easier said than done. No doubt. No doubt. Mm-hmm. No, nah, man, um, that's, 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 you make a, a lot of great points in your conversation, really. And I, I wanted to ask those questions because I'm not always just intrigued because everybody sees success, but they don't, they don't pay attention on, and they're not seeing sometimes, they're not even privy to, how that person got to be successful. And to your point, I think when they are making those excuses, when times get rough, what happens in those situations? That's, I think we do that because that's the easiest thing to do. They don't require work for me to blame you. Don't require work. And I'm giving myself an out. So rather than focusing on my word, like you say, standing on my work and my commitment, it's easy for me to blame you. Now I have a quote unquote a built in excuse to be basically what I what we call and Dre's familiar with this, we call it boo boo. Boo boo mentality. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know Absolutely. It, Absolutely. It, it, so it ain't nothing you aspire to be. You know, it's mediocre at its finest. And so that's why mm-hmm. a lot of times um I say even playing ball today, guys like yourself and other guys like you, y'all in a position to really truly dominate because they don't have, you, so many others haven't built up any type of resolve or stick to to, you know, to, to push through. And so when you run across somebody who they built on that, ah, oh, it's a bad day for them. They don't stand a chance. Nah, absolutely. It's, they don't stand a absolutely. chance, no doubt. No doubt. No question, man. So, um, you say y'all got you, you y'all at the tail end of your season, I know. Y'all, you know, got what, three more games left? Three or four? We got four more games and then the playoffs start May seventh. So I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Yeah. You know, um, I'm excited. 
I mean, I just, I'm just always grateful for the opportunity. You know what I mean? I never want to mismanage the opportunity that I'm blessed with because I know where I was at. Yeah. You feel me? Like, I know, I know, like, it's, it's, it's embedded in my mind, in my heart. Like, bro, you were sleep in the gym at the workout. You feel me? Like, yeah. You was, you were sleep in the car at the workout because yeah. you didn't have the funds to make it home and wait till the next one. Nah, you had to make, make, make it work in that situation. Yeah. You know? And, um, you was working out four and five times a day just to, but the hardest thing to do is to continuously put out a uh, good fruit. Yeah. Without knowing what's coming. You feel me when I say that? Oh, okay, do I? Of course. Without that guarantee, you talked about that, that rainbow with the, I mean, that gold at the end of the rainbow. Is it, anybody can do that. That's a guarantee. Yeah. No doubt. That's that's very um. You got to be a very strong-minded, secure person in who you are, to be able to bring yourself out of those tough times. You know what I mean? Because there was many days I had talks with myself. Don't get yeah. it twisted. It wasn't like I'm excited. Let me go ahead and get this work in daily, four and five times a day. What I see him, no, I wasn't excited about it. I love to work, but at the same time, the process was very challenging. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And and to be able to, to counteract that, I used to always meet with my pastor. You know what I mean? And he would encourage me. He would put words of, of wisdom inside of me. And um, I had a sense of peace about what was going on too at the same time. Like, I knew something was going to shake. I just didn't know when. But I knew if I stayed committed to it long enough, uh, it would turn. So there's a word for that, Shannon. It's a word for that. And we call that faith, right? Right. Yeah. There's a word for that. And that if I keep doing this, regardless, I don't have to, it don't have to happen now. It don't have to happen next week. It don't have to happen next month. I know if I can't stay on this path, it's going to have something going to happen for me. You know? Nah, that's the fact. Yeah. Nah, no you doubt. Encourage yourself too. Cause you ain't gonna have people encouraging you. Like I had a lot of people tell me like, um, why are you still doing this? What's your purpose behind this? You never going to get on, you know, any and everything to the deck of break. You. Yeah. You know what I mean, and even my mama, like when we got to a year, year and a half into it, she told me, she was like, maybe you need to start looking into another um, area that you can be passionate about. Yeah. And I don't think she was like trying to shoot down my vision. No, nah, no doubt. I just think she was looking at the situation from a nurturing type perspective. Like, maybe I know this is what you love to do and this, that, and the third, but look, it's been almost two years. Like, it's something else out there for you. You're not, you're not just a basketball player. Yeah. And literally, like a week later, literally a week later, I went to Mexico. <laughs> Crazy. That's dope. Yeah. I was going to jump in right here because you've been talking a lot about your process. And we call it the warm up for a reason because a lot, a lot of people are preparing for stuff. They're getting ready. You got four games coming up, right? Real big games. Mm -hmm. The things you mentioned, like, can you talk a little bit more to that or attribute it to being like, do you feel like this is how you prepare? What keeps you ready for these big moments or challenges that you're dealing with? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, um, I think I think Warren Buffett said this perfectly when I was reading one of his books about some years ago. He said, uh, the key to your success is in your routine, right? And so I'm very pointed when it comes to my routine. Like, it's nothing going to get me off that. My wife know that. My people know that. Like, when I'm home, my first workout at 5 a.m., my second workout at 8.30, I go eat whatever case may be. I get shots up at night. You know what I mean? When I'm overseas, I make sure I do my recovery workout the day after the game. I make sure I get to the game four hours before the game so I can get my body right, get my mind right. I like to just be be alone in that in that time. So I think just my routine is what really keeps me locked in on what I need to accomplish. 
because um, it keeps you um, disciplined. It keeps you very, it keeps you disciplined and it, and it keeps you um, locked in on what, what your goal is. I got a question for you, man. Um, you would, I want to ask you, the commitment you talking about, the discipline you talking about, the, the, you know, uh, do you say, who is it, anybody young right now coming up, you know what I mean, young, any, any young fella coming up right now that you would say you see that in, that you respect like that, you know, that you, do you see that, or, you know, and I, I know there ain't a lot of them, you know, I know there's a lot, <laughs> but. Right, I mean, it's hard to, I only can go off what I see. That's all we can like, do. I only can go off what I see. And I'm not the type who posts my workout. You know what I mean? So a lot of people may think like, oh, that that man ain't working. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which I may post a little snippet here and there. Don't get me wrong. But as far as like posting my workouts, like I feel like people know like Shannon about his business. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I, I try to like mentor some of the young guys in the city, um, like Khalil and Chandra and uh, 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 K uh, Casey Shepard and yeah, uh, you know me and D H, me and D'Angelo, we've been locked in for a minute. I don't think he need any kind of mentor. He just a straight killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah. But you know, I try to I try to mentor some of the the young guys in the city and. I just try to give them free game, you know, and I do see a dog in Khalil, but like I tell Khalil, I say, but you got to be disciplined. You know what I mean? Like you can't be um, a good steward in this area of your life, but in this area of your life, you, you lacking. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not going to... It's hard to compartmentalize. It. Eventually, it's going to spill over. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think he really taking heed to that. I talk to Chandra a lot and I tell him the same thing. So, I mean, I, I, I see the potential. I see people that, that want it. But, I mean, again, the action is going to show. And um, the action is going to show in, in, in your output. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Staying along those lines, uh, who would you feel is, I mean, you had a serious, you, 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 two straight championships. Yeah. <laughs> two straight championships. And you're going for your third right right now, right? Salty. Yeah. No, somebody, about, talking about over there. I ain't oh, got to any PL yet. yet. I ain't got to any PL, no excuses yet. Um, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you going for your third. You had a series summer that you got married, you know, last year. Yeah. And you won the championship, you know, in the yeah. summer league. You know what I mean? Yeah. L last year. Um, yeah, I did. Kind of transitioning that, kind of talking about uh, who would you say give you the most trouble in the league? Individual player, not team. Individual, we know what team, but um, you know, <laughs> we know what team. But you mean like? <laughs> <laughs> you mean like just a one-on-one -on -one matchup? Well, yeah, just oh, not necessarily one. -on, yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, but within the game. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one matchup. Who you feel like give you the most trouble? I hate I'm about to say this because <laughs> he gonna like run with this. Like absolutely. Um when I used to match up with DH, it was always a a battle. Because like I feel like me and DH we we cut the same. And for everybody you know I mean? at home, Shannon who D H that's D'Angelo, D'Angelo Harrison. We know him, you know, yeah, yeah. D H and whatnot, but that's D'Angelo Harrison. I feel like we just cut the same, like, just, I don't know how to describe it past that we cut the same. 
obviously the matchup with Sims is always like a, you know, something for the city to just discuss. But just from a like a standpoint of like who guards me the best, I'll say um, D Gat. Really, I, I respect D Gat because Demarcus Gallon. He he don't ask for no help. It ain't he don't ask for no help. He on the island. He gonna contest every shot. He gonna compete. He lanky, athletic, and um. So yeah, I, I I just go with that. Okay. Okay, you got any questions about that? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last year you did them. You 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 been mentioning D'Angelo. Last year you guys were supposed to. Uh, I mean, it was announced, and I talked to Pop. You know, and then they got word out that y'all were teaming up. You know, with Seal. You and D'Angelo. It ended up turning out that just you, it was just you, but we still, right. it was like, I know everybody was like, what the heck? This is right after the Hart and Durant and Kyrie deal. You know what I mean? We said, they're yeah. trying to put yeah, Brooklyn yeah, yeah, around yeah. here, right? And so, you know, with that being said, if you can give us some insight, like, to your mindset, like, as far as, like, what were you, how did that all come about? You know what I mean? How did that end up coming back, coming about? Well, like, D.H. told me after we played in, um, I think that was two summers ago, them Houston Money Tournaments, and we went to Dallas together, and we we just meshed really well. He was like, Shano, uh, me and you a tag team no matter what. What he straight told me, right? So we ended, I ended up with Sims because I've been at my head for about three, four years. Right. Pop the recruiter. Pop the recruiter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he been in my head for some years now. And I told him, I said, okay, I, I, I rock with you this summer. Right? Because he ain't won a championship. I said, I'll win your championship. Then that's just what it is. And uh, that's, how, that's how it all came about, basically. Top 20. And just your general, general thoughts about how top 20, in, you know, in general, how you feel about it. You know, I mean, some... I love it because it give it give guys a target on their back, but at the same time, it show guys like I need to work on my game. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like the dudes who not don't even make the list, it show them that like, okay, why I'm not on this list? What am I not doing that so and so doing? Mm -hmm. And um, so I mean, I, I embrace it. I love it. You know, I feel like I've been disrespected the last couple of years, but. Um, you know, that come with it. Jesus was disrespected, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we if we can elaborate on that disrespected. Well, you you know what you were last year. I don't think we did one last year. Year before, year before. Oh, year before. And COVID been killing us. So going back to to nineteen, because we didn't have a twenty. Yeah, I feel I feel like y'all disrespected the hell out of the COVID. There's no way he number eleven behind like. No disrespect, Jermaine, and yeah, it's, just, it's no way he number eleven. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you still like you main, main your guy, right? Main my guy, but I I feel like main main is main don't hoop no more. He just playing the pro am like Jacobin still getting paid doing this, playing at a high level, high level. You feel me? And Jacob, I tell people this all the time. Jacobin is the only dude. He, no, he was the first dude who gave me 40 in high school. Yeah, they gave you 40? Like 40. <laughs> 40. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even, even going to lie to you. Couldn't do nothing with him. And same thing he doing now, he was doing to me then. Yeah. Like how he played now and all that, he was doing that to me then. I was like, bro, like. I see why you number one in the state. Number, I see, you know what I mean. I had to see it. You had to give him his props. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you, if you, if you, if I'm not one that's gonna throw shade. Like, if you, yeah. if you get me, you get me. You know what I mean. Respect to you. You know, but just know, next time we meet, don't get it twisted. <laughs> okay, where would you rank yourself today? 
I'm top top two, not two. <laughs> Hands down. Hands down. I feel a, like a Burge Coven. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I feel like um but look, granted, every like the Coven, D H, Sims, D House, uh Cam Reynolds, Garland Green, um, Fuzzy, um uh Sean, all, all them dudes I just named. One of them not gonna go at me. You feel me? Like every last one of them gonna gonna say, okay, let me go at this man, cause they know how I'm coming though. Yeah, no doubt. You feel me? So like, if you not if you not on that same energy wavelength, whatever the case may be, no. you gonna get embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. Myron, all, all of them, they 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 know what it is. You feel me? And. I mean, like we had that conversation the other day, like I told you, I said, uh, nobody done in the city what I've done in the city the last three years. Like since the pro-am been active. I'm you referring to? MVP. I'm, I'm, finna, I'm finna name the accolade. I'm finna name <laughs> I'm MVP, 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 championship, championship. One player in the city got finals MVP and the MVP in the same season. Nah. <laughs> That's just that. But like I told you, this ain't no assumption. This is facts that I'm giving. So it's not like you can come and say, ah, that's just what you think. No, like. Nah. Name somebody. Nah, these facts. You, these straight facts. You're right. Straight facts. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Like, what you basing this off of? Like. Yeah, I, I just don't know. Like, what you make? It ain't like it ain't like I won the Finals MVP. It wasn't like a Brooklyn Nets, Milwaukee Bucks where KD just looks way superior to the Giannis. Like it was no, it was this dude has been separating himself for the last few years. No, no, no doubt. And I, I say that that point there is valid, valid. So we, you know, no doubt, and that's why you say you say top. I I say definitely. Would you, I say definitely? And I had to consult with a couple other people, but nah, no doubt. If you ask my vote right now, you definitely top one, two, three for sure in there, without question. It ain't nothing, is but you can't say one, two. Like you can say one, two. You can't say three. <laughs> Hey, let him know. Let him know. <laughs> hey, not yeah. three, y'all, <laughs> One, two. You can say, uh, you can say one, two, but if you say three, I'm like, okay. <laughs> what, what am I missing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can understand your fort. I can understand your fort. I can definitely understand your fort for sure. Nah, no doubt. No doubt. And, I, and that's what I love about it. I, that's why I wanted you to. Kind of bring that back up because we had a, a, little, a little slightly spirited conversation. I just love his candidness. Mm -hmm. But that's a confidence for everybody out there. That's a confidence I think more players should have. And he, everything he said, including the facts now, just stating the facts, but everything he, he's standing on himself and believing in himself, that only comes from putting in the work. A lot of guys just, you know, just, just chatter, 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 but then you, when they talking, they don't even believe that. You know what I mean? They don't even believe what they saying. You know what I mean? And so if you really, I mean by that, when you look them in the eye, you see they don't even believe that. You know, but now, so much respect to you, man. And uh, we grateful, man, to have you. I want, I want, I wish we could do this, you know, again and again, man. Until then, yeah. though, bro, uh, you handle your business, bro. I know you all. Stay healthy. You know what I mean? And get three in a row up there, dog. Three, three in a row up there, man. Nah, I appreciate y'all. You know, it's always love. Uh, just putting on for the city, though. You know what I mean? I think the city needs this because, um, again, it's motivational. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I relate to a lot of people in the city. Yeah, I've been in a lot of situations they've been in. So to just have me on the show, and I know, like, how I'm viewed in the city. You know yeah. what I mean? So um, just to come on and just explain you know, explain what I've been through, tell a little bit of my story and et cetera. You know, it's always love. So yeah, if I can do it again, I'll definitely do it again. 
Much respect, man. Next time, though, in person and, and up live and out there, and totally talking about that three third straight championship, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. If I don't come on with the third straight, I'm going to be mad at myself. You probably won't see me all summer. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you, too. Go on, get out of no, here, man. We're going to wrap this up, bro. Appreciate it, man. All right, man. Appreciate it. Got to start y'all. on the warm up, everybody. Yeah. All right, man. We're closing the warm up. Appreciate you, bro. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs>